Okay, in this lesson what we're going to do is we're going to start talking about the D chord. The D chord, okay? So what we're going to do is make this shape right here. I'm going to show you this D and we're going to talk about it. What you're going to do is put, take your first finger, you're going to place it on the third string, which again, remember, this is the first string and this is the sixth string. So third string right here, you're going to go to, or excuse me, first string, I'm sorry. First string, you're going to go up to the third string, and you're going to go to the second fret. And again, always remember, you want to get as close to that fret as you can without actually getting on top of that, that little silver piece, which is the actual physical fret. So we want to be in this space as close to that fret as we can, as close as we can to that line. Remember, if I move back, it becomes harder and harder to press down. So I want to be as close to that as I can without actually getting on top of it. If I get too far, then it gets all muffled like this. So you want to make sure you're right next to it. Then we're going to take our middle finger, which I have this nice little band-aid on. You're going to place that on the first string on the second fret as well. Now, in, in order to get this guy to fit, it's going to squeeze this guy back, the first finger, just a little bit, and that's okay. Then we're going to take the third finger, and we're going to place it on the second string on the third fret. So we're making a little triangle here. Now on the D chord, you can strum the bottom four strings. So you can strum four, three, two, and one. And again, try and get as close to the fret with each one of these as you can. Try and keep your wrist down. Keep on your fingertips. I always tell students it's like cat's claws. You want to play curled over. You never want to play flat like this. You want to play curled over. Okay, so you're curling those fingers over. If you grab on like this, the problem is you start touching all these other strings. You can lower the wrist down a little bit, bring it out just a little bit, and get as close to those frets as you can. So when you're squeezing, you're squeezing on the fingertips. And of course, with this chord, what you could practice is you could practice your down-up strumming. Now, you only want the bottom four strings. It is going to happen sometimes that you're accidentally going to hit the sixth or the fifth string, or when you strum it, you're accidentally only hitting the bottom three or something like that. You have to understand that happens. As guitar players, everything isn't always accurate. It's just the more you play, the more comfortable you get. What I think about with this D chord is I think about playing more towards the bottom of the guitar. So instead of just bashing through like that, I think about trying to kind of come in at an angle and hit the bottom half. I'm going to hit this fifth string. Sometimes I am just going to hit the bottom few strings. But you're going to notice it doesn't sound bad when I do it. So you just get more comfortable with it as you keep playing. Remember your rules for your chord. right? Try and practice bouncing the chord. Picking it up and setting it down over and over and over, trying to make that chord. Pick it up and set it down. Try and keep this shape. What you're trying to do is use muscle memory to train your fingers, so you're not going up and doing this for a minute and a half trying to make that chord. You want to try and make that chord, pick it up like your fingers are super glued together, and then set them back down. And pick them up and set them back down over and over and over. Train your fingers to do that. The reason you're doing this is when you move chords, like let's say you have A and you have D, you can move while you're in the air to the next chord. And then you can move while you're in the air to the next chord. You see? So instead of trying to build every time, you're simply picking it up and you're moving it, and then you're picking it up and moving back and forth. That's why bouncing is so important. Second thing to make sure that you're doing, make sure you pick through and all the notes are working. If something sounds like this, you need to go back and figure out why. If this is happening, generally the reason it's happening is you're not pressing hard enough, you're not close enough to the fret, a finger is accidentally touching one of those strings, those are usually the reasons. Okay. Remember to visualize. Think about the chord in your head. So when you go to make it, you already know what it looks like. You're bouncing, so you get used to that. You're picking through to make sure all the notes are working. And of course, lastly, you're practicing strumming. So hopefully that works for you. Please memorize that chord. We're going to start putting some of these chords together uh, starting next week, and we're going to make a song out of those.